Good morning. Have you ever had a leader who lied to you? For whatever reason he or she justified doing it, they still lied, and you struggled with respecting them or trusting them again. It is important that those who lead us tell us the truth. We want honest leaders, don't we? And that means we need to be honest whenever we lead. And yet we're finding less and less honesty in our culture today, aren't we? Well, as we become more post-Christian, rejecting the one true God, his holy word, and his morals and ethics, uh, one of those evidences is the diminishing value of honesty. Think about Jesus. He referred to himself as the way, the truth, and the life. It's true. He is the way to God the Father. He is the key to eternal life in heaven. Well, thank goodness he did not lie when he identified himself in that way. Listen to these Old Testament verses about God. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? 1 Samuel 15, 29. Also, the glory of Israel, that is God, will not lie or change his mind, for he is not a man that he should change his mind. And then Hebrews 6, 16. People swear by something greater than themselves, and in all their disputes an oath is final for confirmation. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath. So that by two unchangeable things in which, one, it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. Oh, that's just good. So God can't lie, and neither should we. When God places us into any position of authority or influence or leadership, it's crucial that we tell the truth. We tell it all the time, but especially when we have influence toward others. And if we're ever dishonest, we admit it quickly and apologize. Uh, that humility helps us the next time we're tempted to lie or deceive. It hurts to have to humble yourself and admit your sin to God or to others. So when we're tempted to lie, we find extra impetus to be truthful. We don't want to have to go through that again. Tell the truth. We teach that to our children. Tell the truth. We model that before our children. I recently heard one very disillusioned citizen remark that he no longer felt he could trust any of our politicians. Furthermore, when he listened to the news, he was skeptical and suspicious of anything being said. Is that what it's come to? Are we a nation of liars? Well, in our teaching passage of 1 Samuel 22, David has escaped the clutches of the Philistine king by the grace of God. To be clear, he was caught in the enemy's city because he had, he had the sword of Goliath. He had told a lie to get that sword. Then once he had it, it was that very sword that exposed him to the servants of the king and got him imprisoned and mistreated. Yeah, lying does have its consequences, doesn't it? I appreciate the wise counsel of Scripture, which exhorts us, Having put away falsehood, let each one of you Speak the truth with his neighbor. Ephesians 4, 25. So, the lesson today, tell the truth. Be honest. Don't lie. Those are good lessons. And so, ponder them. I mean, I'm hoping that as you listen to this, you think, oh, I, I've learned that. And I, I am a truth teller. And so, I hope you can see where God's grace has matured you and, and sanctified lying out of you. But if you're convicted, oh, 
I do, at times, lie. I don't say what's true, what's right. Uh, then this morning, repent again. Ask the Lord to forgive you and commit today. You're going to tell the truth. And when you're tempted to lie, just pause. Don't speak up. Just stop and give measured thought to what's about to come out of your mouth and make sure it's the truth. When you're not sure, just stop. Don't say anything. Better not to say anything than to tell a lie. So may the Lord help us to speak the truth in all things, to become trustworthy with our words. That would please him, and it pleases us, and it pleases others, doesn't it? Let's pray. Lord, forgive us when we've not spoken the truth in love. Today, fill us with your spirit and remind us to only speak that which is true and right. We pray. Now you continue. God bless you. Thank you for listening to Mornings with Pastor Jim. This podcast is a ministry of Family Church PC. For more information or to contact us, go to familychurchpc.com. Have a blessed day.